Hello, this is Liz with Crafty Devotion, and today I'm going to show you how I made this ornament. It's a one of the larger baubles. It's it's a little bit larger than three inch, and um, I decorated it with appliques that look gorgeous, and I made a beautiful chiffon flower on top with beads um, draping over, and it's held together here with a piece of gimp. I carry this gimp in my shop. And a lot of the things you see here, like this piece here. And uh, I hope you're inspired by this design. And I am using, I have a few lots of applique lots I put together in my shop. And that's what I decided I wanted to try and use some of them. And this is actually one of the, the pink inspired lots because it has a few pinks in it as well as whites and the ones I used were these two this and this one I use these appliques and we also I also have this but this has loaded with some gorgeous this is almost like a coral pink I think it's called coral um, and then this is a soft pink you can see the difference in those pinks it's not quite um, magenta but this is a soft pink so when you're making this, if you want it to become pink, you actually have enough things in here to make it pink if you want. And then I also have these in this lot. There's quite a bit in this lot. I've used these in some of my crafting also. These are a very pale pink. And let's see, I have leaves in here. I have all kinds of things. You'll see a photo of everything. And I actually placed a piece of a lavender in the lot so you can see how gorgeous that looks. Um, let's see, all kinds of things. I pushed, placed this gorgeous white in the lot. But this is this what is made using this here. And you'll see that I still carry these in my shop if you want these by themselves as a, as a mirrored pair. But you'll find that you'll get much more of a bargain if you go through and you see the beautiful, gorgeous things that I have in, my, in the lots. I place things to inspire you to create. So this would look so cute with these white um, things over here. And I placed um, a piece of this mint. I carry these mint ones in my shop also. I will place a link to this lot um, in the description box below. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and comment and share my tutorials with other people if you'd like me to continue to show you different ways that I use my appliques and laces. Okay. I ordered online three inch balls and my three inch balls ended up coming out they sent me something larger and it's closer to a four inch and these balls are actually very close to 10 inches can you see that there you go 10 inches um so you can use any size ball but this is what i'm using because i ended up having a lot of them and i decided not to send them back what i've done is i've shown you in many tutorials before to go ahead and wrap it and this one, I particularly, I wrapped it, if you can see, this is a gorgeous flower here. I wrapped it in chiffon. It has a little bit of a stiffness to it, and I love the way this is coming out. I have placed the f on there, and I've trimmed it across. And I will be sealing this, but I wanted you to see it without it. So I have tutorials, which I will place links up above, of how to singe this I teach you in detail when I decided I have a rubber band and I've taught you how to use a rubber band but I'm getting a piece of my cotton string this is a sturdy crochet type string and I have actually doubled it up and I'm gonna place that on right there and it's because everything is white I don't want the rubber band to show most of the times I remove I have been removing the rubber bands and I did want to let you know that I did use two pieces of the chiffon because I wanted my flower to be really large. I didn't want it to be a small flower. I want the flower for this one. I decided I want the flower to be one of the highlights of my piece. This piece has um, beads. You can see the pearls right there, the pearls, and it has sequin around it. And I want to keep that on there. But when you turn it around, 
you can see the threading along here. And this threading is what's keeping the sequin on. And I can see clearly that the threading is run and connected all the way around. So what I do is I take my hot glue gun. You can use whatever you, you want. But I have, I have a detailed tutorial on how I do this on when I reuse a wedding bodice, wedding dresses. And um, you go around, I go around and I connect them. Now you want to make sure you at least connect the areas like this one right here. I could see that this is where this started. There's a knot there and then it goes all the way around and follows this way. So I would make sure I get here and here wherever these are connected because I might cut along here these little appliques. So you put as much as you think you need. You can, I sometimes will just go along every little connection. So I have already kind of experimented placing it on and I decided I want the beads, the pearl beads that are here to be the prominent part uh, and I want it to be shown so that the bottom is not. Now you can place this on to start any way you want. This one I'm going to leave it almost complete and the other one I'm going to cut apart to fill in. So the way I'm doing that now is that in order for it to sit, st sit together, I'm going to be able to do a little snip and this one is not glued down so I will be careful I have it upside down so that I can be careful not to cut the threads of it together so you can see it visually and um, but I do want to take the edges that are together so that when I place it let me show you let me cut this part and then I'll show it to you to go around and loosen it but be careful do not cut the other threads or you're going to lose your your um, beads and sequins so when I place this on here so let's say that it that it's sticking up like this and you're trying to put it down and this doesn't sit right well if you trim the pieces like on did on this side I trimmed this then you can glue it down and it'll sit properly can you see that it will sit much better so this is what I'm doing the edges like around here because I could see right away that this is going to be all sticking up and I'm keeping this together so go along there any place that you think and if you need to place glue on the spots that you need to place glue on I'm hoping you guys can see better the last video I did I was like way in the corner and it's I have a different setup start off by placing beads here and placing the beads here and this one right here it's going to overlap and I, see I trimmed it so now I can move it to the side a bit and um, so I kind of estimate where I want it and I trimmed these this trim this too so I can move it to the side a bit around I have to come here and if I want to cut it more and seal this off and seal this one off make sure that they don't move and then that thread piece that's right there I would have to then I can cut it and mold it or mold it and move it any way I want so now it has more give and you can move before this piece. you couldn't move it with it was like right here and you can move that but now I can move it this way if I want and up a little higher or more to the side can you see that so this is the types of things that I do with these and there are they come out really gorgeous one of the keys when you're doing something like this is if you're using something that is has a background a mesh background is matching the back so this background is important that you match it with something okay so go around and decide where you want everything and I'm what I'm doing is I'm laying it down and saying does it will it sit flat if I glue it and yes that is going to stay flat right there and it's gonna on where I might want to place a piece you can cut this into a bunch of pieces and just add it but what I'm doing is I'm strategically going to kind of guess where I can put a large portion because then I can cut little pieces off 
and fill in wherever I feel like it's necessary. And I and remember, I'm sticking with that idea that I wanted the, these beads to be up higher. And also, if I went this way, can you see how these two flowers would be together? And I thought, I don't want the two flowers together, so let's flip it. So I, that's what I do. I just, I just, I just run it around, decide how I want to do it, how I end up wanting it to sit. To so go ahead and cut it along here, and I'm almost sure that I'm going to cut off this flower piece, but I'm going to still put it aside. I cut it there, and I'm going to go ahead and cut this one. Remember, I glued this already, so it shouldn't fall apart unless you didn't glue it enough then it will fall apart now one of the other things too is that there i'm cutting so far i've cut only around um not where like the cording crosses but if you're going to cut it where the cording crosses you should probably glue that little section too underneath where the cording crosses that way when you cut over it the cording doesn't if separate. i do this here i don't think it's going to need to be filled in other than I see this flowers overlapping mm -hmm. so you do it any way you want you can see how pretty that'll look even though it overlaps and I may I may um, move it like cut it up and move it a little bit so it doesn't questions be sure just to ask me in the comments when you ask me in the comments then anyone else who has those same questions can go into the comments and look to see if that question they have has been answered and I do try to answer questions to the best of my ability in the description box of every one of my videos I try to place a link to my Etsy shop and you will find that right now I have a lot of my ornaments for sale. all of these pieces together and every little piece doesn't need something because as you can see there's spacing everywhere on the applique it's not it's all different types of spacing and so this right now um, I'm going to keep on working on it but I'm going to glue all these edges that you see are up That I felt like it needed just a little something it's right here can you see it and I decided I wanted because I I was gonna just put a pearl there then I said no I need to show you how to take a little piece so these are some piece the pieces that are left after using the two appliques um, this whole section and that and I want to place something here and I just fill around with fig decide which piece I want and I decided I'm gonna do this one just because it's a little a little things I can show you I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna go all the way in to this circular area so I can I'm gonna remove this flower end so now I have just this piece and I'm going to stick it right in here and I'm just gonna set it there and decide and can you see here I placed it in there and then here, since I, I separated this, we can change the shape of it a little. Oh, I'm stretching it. I'm back in the corner like I was last time, so let's try. So because you can see I cut that, now you can shape it and decide. I'm thinking I'm gonna place it here. And then after I glue that down, I'm gonna angle this up and then it'll have a little piece in there. And then I can place a 
also place a pearl in maybe the area if I want. But I did want to show you how you can do that. Oops, I should be using this because that's so really So go hot. around and make sure that you've glued all your little areas that um, are open. I, and I've been doing this for quite a while. Realize that this these ornaments take a while. And I made one ornament with these with two pieces of applique, but it's a pretty large one. And it sat there very beautifully. See that? And it looks awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and I decided I'm going to, going to place a pearl in a couple of places. So I cut them up. You can see. And chiffon, you can just, if you like it tattered, you can just keep on pulling on the strings and tatter this more. But I really love using, um, I love it melting it and it just gives it a, a gorgeous look that I love and then I need to find something that I'm going to put around it now at this point you can also add color if you want you can take um, the lot that one of the lots that this is in is actually looks like this and it has some pink in there so you could use this pink piece here if you wish to add color to it uh, you can use another applique um, whatever you wish but at the moment I think I'm going to leave this one white because I'm going to put this one in my shop. And you can see why these actually are pricey because they take a long time to cut, to design and to create. But I want you to be able to use what you have at home also. Um, I'm not just, you know, I, I, I've told you before that I don't mind if you use my watch my videos and you share my video and then you show me what you made out of your stash from your shop from in my crafty devotion boutique and on Facebook you can share your photos there or sometimes I ask you to share it with a thread so I'd like I'd love to see them in threads because then I can I feel like I can reply to a lot more so the next thing is you singe you singe the edges and I'm gonna go singe the edges and I'll be back I singe the edges of my fabric and I think I'm satisfied I may come along and do some touch-ups in a bit depending on how it lays but you can see I, I like the way it's laying you can, if you tighten it up it will look more like a rose if you leave it loose it'll look like more of an open rose I actually have this in my shop and I'm going to use a piece of this little quarter inch gimp and I decided I wanted to place I used the gimp here in the center and I placed it on as the hook with the pin through the like I've shown you before and here I'm going to go ahead and place it around the edge here flower sitting on top and then it will hang down and it'll look just gorgeous and you can add more or less beads and um, I think I'm going to still add a little more and I'll be back with my decisions all right these are the decisions I made and um, I chose to end up making that beautiful flower on top to look almost like two small flowers or a bow and I placed a something here and sometimes I choose like really you know pearl blings like this one I had put this on there and I didn't like it the way it looked so I changed it and I put this here I did place pieces some some like these and some of the the lots um, I have bling lots and in the bling lots you'll find um, different things like this and um, blings like these I think I have a white lot and or clear lot and it has might have pearls in it and um, then I decided that um, pretty much I really decided I wanted to use this this these beads now these beads are a bead that I carry in my shop so this is the back area and it has I what I did is I placed the beads right down the center kind of like the same way I put the the um, 
attach the hook here with a pin and I just stuck it in the center and I I glued them in and then I let them drape over and at first I, I had placed some white ones by accident I just I wasn't thinking of the pearls are more creamy than they are white so um, I decided um, to add some more and I could have taken out the white ones but I left them in there this is Liz with Crafty Devotion I hope you were inspired to use a com use some of your own stash to design something beautiful or you can head over to my shop and you will find a lot and I think this is in the pink lot this is the this has some pink in it but it also has these two of these so that you can make a large um, and I still had some left so if you use a small one you might be able to make two but you'd have to do a lot more cutting um, I hope you're inspired to use your own stash and to um, check out some of the things I have in my shop that you can use to embellish